Okay, so today we are going to talk about the basic idea of some uh, recent paper that I wrote, which is about uh, trying to write some quantum state describing anti de Sitter space using a finite spin network. So what we are trying to achieve is we're trying to uh, write down a quantum state on a time slice uh, of the space-time depicted on the left, the cylinder describing anti de Sitter space, and we want to do it in such a way that uh, we describe this quantum state using a finite number of degrees of freedom. For example, this spin network depicted on the right, we see it has a finite number of edges and a finite number of nodes. So what is the motivation for this uh, research? So first of all, there's uh, some interesting recent work on ADS-CFT and holography in general and its connection with loop quantum gravity. And here uh, the hope is that uh, we can use the non-perturbative quantization techniques that we have de developed for the gravitational field in loop quantum gravity and apply them to this correspondence and maybe probe new sectors of the correspondence or simplify some existing computations. Next, there's of course a general interest in uh, having a good description of non-compact space-times in loop quantum gravity. There are some proposals for this uh, in the literature, but clearly more work is needed and uh, the paper here uh, is also one of those works uh, because it gives a proposal of how a non-compact space-time or an infinitely large space-time can be described in this context. And then uh, for both of those, it's of course uh, interesting to have a finite number of degrees of freedom describing some uh, infinite space-time, just because if you want to do an explicit computation in the end, then uh, having a finite number of degrees of freedom is of course of great advantage because you truncate the problem to some finite sets of degrees of freedom that you're interested in and computing with those degrees of freedom might already be enough to kind of get the answer that you're interested in. So what is the issue uh, that we have to deal with here? So let's first take a look at anti de Sitter space, which is depicted uh, on the left here. So we can uh, basically write this cartoon of anti de Sitter space where it is this cylinder that you can derive using conformal techniques. And uh, it has a time direction which is going upward, it has a radial direction which is going uh, to the right, uh, it has a bulk which is the interior of the cylinder and it comes with a boundary, uh, in particular it's a timelike boundary. Now in addition you can draw this time slice into this cylinder depicted here and uh, well this is the slice on which this time t is constant and in particular we're interested in such a slice because we are having a canonical quantization in loop quantum gravity and we are working on such a time slice. So the metric for anti de Sitter space is depicted up here. This capital R is just the inverse of the cosmological constant and uh, small r runs from zero to infinity. So the issue that now arises is if so what happens if you compute for example the proper distance of some curve running from uh, from some point radially outward to infinity for example this red curve here So in order to do this or in order to compute its proper length you just integrate the square root of grr up to infinity uh, what is grr where well, we just take it from the metric above and we uh, look at this integral. Now grr goes as 1 over r squared as r goes to infinity as we see. If we take the square root it goes as 1 over r and therefore we find that this integral diverges. This means that this distance radially outward is infinite and therefore also an analogous thing holds for the volume. Also if you compute the volume of this time slice it will be infinite and therefore you will not be able to describe this time slice using a finite number of vertices in the standard construction at least just because with the finite number of vertices you would get a finite total volume. So what is the idea of how we are going to solve this problem? So what we're going to do is we're going to take anti de Sitter space depicted again here and we're going to conformally compactify it. So the idea of conformal compactification goes back to Roger Penrose in the 60th and it was applied to the context of ADS by Ashika and Manion. So the basic idea is that if we have some infinite distance, for example this red line here, and uh, it's infinite with respect to some physical metric uh, g mu nu, then what we're going to do is we're going to conformally rescale the metric in such a way that after the rescaling we get a new metric g twiddle, and with respect to this new metric uh, this length is now a finite distance and it will just fit into this cylinder. So of course if you know how 
uh, conformal compactification works, then you also know that these conformal diagrams, like this cylinder of empty de Sitter space, are exactly derived by such a conformal compactification. So what we're doing is uh, we're taking, for example, this physical metric g mu nu, we multiply it by some conformal factor omega squared, and then we get this new uh, metric g twiddle with respect to which this line uh, now has a finite size. Now, in order for this to work, this omega needs to satisfy that it falls off as 1 over r in anti de Sitter space as r approaches infinity, which means that as r approaches the boundary. So this is exactly the idea that we're going to uh, employ later, however, in a slightly modified version. So how do we implement this? So we're just starting by the standard canonical formulation of general relativity in terms of the ADM variables. And there our canonical variables are a QAB, the spatial metric, and a capital PAB, its conjugate momentum, which encodes the extrinsic curvature of our slice. So now we are going to take a conformal factor omega squared and we're going to multiply the metric with it, getting a new metric q twiddle. And we are also taking this uh, uh, p and we are going to multiply it with omega, however, with the inverse of uh, omega squared, so with omega to the minus 2, obtaining a p twiddle. So then, by such a conformal rescaling, uh, q twiddle and p twiddle still have their standard canonical brackets because the factors of omega just cancel. So the question is now, what uh, is a good choice for this omega? And you have to be a little careful here, because if you're not careful, then you might run into problems with uh, different morphism invariants later. So a good idea is, for example, just to take a scalar field, which you already have in your theory. So if you consider GR coupled to a scalar field, and you look at the solutions, which are asymptotically ADS, uh, for example, black holes, then you find that these scalar fields typically have the right falloff conditions to serve as such a conformal factor. So they just fall off as 1 over r at infinity, and therefore uh, things work. Now if we just compute the proper distance again uh, with respect to this uh, uh, twiddled metric, now qrr twiddle, then we find that if we do this integral, we take the square root of this q twiddle, from the conformal factor we get an additional inverse power of r, therefore the integral is dr times r to the minus 2, and the answer is clearly finite. So what are the results that we have obtained? So first of all, we can now build connection variables from the rescaled variables. That is, we just do the standard canonical transformation or phase-based extension that we do in loop quantum gravity to go from ADM variables to connection variables. But we do not insert the ADM variables, but the rescaled ADM variables. This gives uh, equally well connection variables, which we can use for the quantization process. As a consequence of this, we will find that quanta of geometry are now quanta of rescaled geometry. That is, if we, for example, draw some link of a spin network and uh, this link intersects some uh, surface over which we have defined, for example, an area type operator uh, from the fluxes, then we find that the a quantum number on this link, it will not measure area, but it will measure this rescaled area omega squared times the physical area. And then also we find that we have this spatial boundary at some finite rescaled distance. This means in particular that after some finite number of nodes we will be at the boundary. And at this boundary we have the standard machinery that was developed in the context of a black hole entropy in loop quantum gravity. That is we can, uh, or this uh, connection variables that we use, they induce some boundary theory which we can write as a Trans-Simons theory on the boundary. So what are the open questions in this business? So first of all, uh, I have not uh, told you how one can actually construct uh, some, in some sense, good states describing anti de Sitter space. So we just showed that uh, with this conformal rescaling, we can in principle write down states, which are some uh, useful truncation of ADS uh, using some finite number of degrees of freedom. However, I did not say in general how we now on these graphs construct states which uh, really correspond to ADS. So you could now, for example, just take the coherent states that we have in loop quantum gravity, uh, put them on this graph, and then you have kind of a truncation of ADS on such a discretization. However, the question is if uh, such a state is uh, really useful for what you uh, want to do in the end, and that is uh, not, not so clear for now. 
The other thing is that the Hamiltonian constraint uh, obtains a boundary term just due to the standard Gibbons Hawking uh, boundary term, and uh, this we would of course also uh, want to include in the regularization of the Hamiltonian constraint, and this has not been looked at so far. So this is in particular interesting uh, from the point of view of how this uh, boundary Hamiltonian would act on boundary states. Also, there is an open question about what are the appropriate asymptotic symmetries of such a quantum spacetime representing ADS. We of course know what the asymptotic symmetries of ADS are at the classical level, it's just a certain conforming group. However, the interesting question is how is this deformed at the quantum level? So uh, is there some maybe some exact notion of this conformal group or uh, is there some deformation uh, which is then especially interesting because uh, some such a deformation might also be uh, showing up in some CFT dual to this quantum gravity theory on ADS. So thank you very much for your attention today and uh, stay tuned for more short talks in the future.